What to do what it is, YouTube. It's your boy D Dynamite here. AKA Mr. Boxer.com. AKA Mr. How Let Your Motherfucking Boy. So I'm in the building, man. I'm talking about Kell Brook versus Errol Spence Jr. It is finally official. I know I'm a little bit late reporting this, but it is finally official. It is going down in Sheffield, England uh, at the end of May. I believe it's the 27th or something like that. Um, it is going down in England um, the end of May uh, for the IBF welterweight. Uh, championship of the world and I gotta say that I am very excited about this I am very happy that this fight was finally made um, you know I, damn damn this video isn't about me like really breaking down a fight I just want to kind of talk about the fight give my initial thoughts uh, to this fight being made and let me just start by saying let's talk about a little bit about the circumstances that led up to this fight being created let me just say that Kell Brook for one reason or another, it is really hard to make a fight with Kell Brook. If you're a decent welterweight, weight, it is like incredibly difficult to make a fight with Kell Brook. I mean, he, I mean, look, look at all the people that look at all the fights that were on the table for Kell Brook that ended up not getting made. Okay, he was supposed to fight Diego Chavez. Okay, he was supposed to fight Brandon Rios. Okay, he was supposed to fight. Um, there was there was all these fights on the table for Kell Brook and. None of them ever came came to fruition. I mean, we we seen it over and over and over again. And his his replacements for those fights that were supposed to happen were well, these subpar, mediocre fights. Uh, Jojo Dan, uh, Frankie Gavin, uh, 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 what's the other guy's name? Uh, Kevin Busier. You know these subpar, mediocre fights. Uh, these fights that should have never been made in the first place, or at least one made and then maybe a decent fight, and then one made and another decent fight. Whatever you get, what I'm trying to say. Uh, but we got to see all these subpar fights in place of the fights that we wanted to see Kell Brook in, um, and you know it was just difficult to see this guy in a fight versus a decent welterweight okay he got his sean sean porter fight and that's the fight that he had to fight in order to win the belt and then after that it was just nothing it was just nothing it was literally nothing so um i'm just happy to see uh kell brook now in a fight versus a legitimate welterweight we're gonna see kell brook in a legitimate scrap not no triple g nonsense and nothing like that and i'll talk a little bit about the triple g thing but um i'm just happy to see this fight finally come to fruition um it's it's been a long time coming for kell brook um I'm, it's good to see him at welterweight he belongs at welterweight they keep trying to put him at 154 yes he could probably fight at 154 but definitely not 160 i don't see him being very competitive at 160 um he's big but i don't think he's that big 154 he's a little bit too short to be able to the way his fighting style He's a little bit too short to be able to compete seriously at 160 pounds to me, you know, um, whatever, whatever, though. But you know what I mean? But I'm, again, I'm just happy to see Kell Brook um, in a legitimate fight versus a legitimate welterweight. And as far as Errol Spence goes, um, Errol Spence, we've seen him just climb the ladder all the way from fighting these uh, journeymen now to fighting uh, contenders and fighting you know former champions like Chris Algieri and things like that and we're finally getting to see him in the ultimate test the test to become the a welterweight world champion and it's just a beautiful thing man we're getting to see a step up fight really for both fighters okay because we saw Kell Brook uh, fight at this level before when he fought Sean Porter but not since then at least not on the welterweight level um, and now we're seeing Errol Spence for the first time uh, fight at, at this championship top top championship level and we're getting to see really what both of these fighters are made of and it's it's just it's just gonna be a beautiful night of boxing man i'm really excited about it i cannot wait for this fight um it is going down you know what i mean if this was pay-per-view i would pay for the pay-per-view I'm, I'm just excited to see this fight all right so with all that being said all that out the window let's just talk a little bit about um um some of their records you know what i mean because i i kind of hear this a lot going on in in, in youtube that uh Kell brook is probably the more experienced experienced fight first of all let me just say a lot of people are 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 you know picking errol spence to beat uh Kell brook and you know i think that that's that's a good pick you know i'm, I'm not going to give you guys my pick yet but i think that that's a that that's that's a logical pick i mean when you look at errol spence you see a lot of talent in him. You see uh, a lot of potential. You see him with the with the uh, the ability to do a lot of things in the ring, and you respect that, and you and you acknowledge that, and and you know, you 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 can pick that kind of style to beat almost anyone, 
especially in the welterweight division. Uh, but when you look at Kell Brook, you see um, kind of the same thing. You see the same potential in Kell Brook. Kell Brook has a, a, a his style is very refined. Um, he, he's very he, he's very he's not the fastest thing ever, but neither is Errol Spence. Um, but he, he's you know he has a very solid style. He has good fundamentals. Um, you know, good power. Um, he can be slick at times. He has decent defense. Um, Kilbrook has a lot of things that are, are are very admirable as well. I mean, I mean, I mean honestly, this is a 50-50 fight. Um, this is a, a really a 50-50 fight. A lot of people are picking Earl Spence, but it's a 50-50 fight. You cannot count Kel Brook out, um, you know, simply because Floyd Mayweather gave Errol Spence a, a good recommendation. All right? So, I mean... It's just a good fight. It's just a good fight. Now, another thing that I wanted to talk about um, was, like, the resumes and stuff like that. Now, you know, a lot of people say that Kell Brook, you know, when I was watching the press conference, um, it was going around a lot that people were saying that Kell Brook, well, Kell Brook was talking a lot of shit about how he fought Sean Porter and shit, and now he was so... Sean Porter is better than everyone on Errol Spence's record. Yeah, he got a split decision win over Errol, uh, over Sean Porter, but that was the only legitimate welterweight he fought in his career. Everyone else was certified bum status, okay? And then after he fought Sean Porter, he he, he refused to fight anyone else, even close, even remotely close to that level of competition. So, I mean, you know, and then for you to bring up Triple G, a, a stoppage loss is just it, ridiculous. Like that, you know, they're promoting the hell out of this stoppage that he got stopped versus Triple G. Like what? What is there to brag about getting stopped? Anybody can get stopped by somebody. I can get in the ring right now and get stopped. Like what? Well, what the fuck? How does that make me a legitimate welterweight though? Me going in there and getting stopped? Like what the fuck? Anybody? Oh, shit! I can go find anyone off the street and they can go in the ring and get stopped. So I mean, you know. For them to keep bringing up this Triple G thing is, is to me, is just ridiculous. Um, you know, yeah, he went in there. He held his own versus Triple G in there for a few rounds. But ultimately, it's nothing to brag about. He may have gained some experience uh, from that Triple G win or, or Triple G experience. Um, but, again, ultimately, he got stopped. And, and honestly, it's going to be real tough uh, watching Kell Brook try to um, come off of a, a fight like that and go into a, another big fight, all right, probably the biggest fight in his career, because this Triple G fight, everybody knew in the back of their minds that this was that was kind of a bullshit fight. Everybody really knew that. Um, so this is really the biggest fight of his career when you think about it. You know, maybe you could debate the Sean Porter thing, but, you know, this is this is the test for Kell Brook. Um, you know, this is what proves him to be legitimate at this point, okay? He lost respect going up there fighting Triple G. But this is what solidifies him um, as a, a true competitor if he can come out and get a win versus Errol Spence. So this will be the test. So we'll go in, we'll see uh, Kell Brook get in there with Errol Spence. And if he can win, if he can pull out this fight, um, this will solidify him as a, as, a, as a champion, what he claims to be, you know? So, um, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see how he handles that experience from his last fight because like I mentioned before he got stopped so that stoppage loss he can either take that in a good way or a bad way he can either take it as hey listen you know I, I just got out of a fight with Triple G and I was able to hold my own with Triple G and you know and I and I still didn't fall on my ass I didn't get knocked out you know what I mean and I'm gonna go in there with a, re a regular welterweight that, that shouldn't be shit you know what I mean so he, he could adopt that kind of mentality or he could adopt <laughs> excuse me the mentality of him just um getting stopped and, and going in there tentative and laying down versus Errol Spence you know so it'll be real interesting to see how he bounces back I don't think a lot of people are, are looking at that that this is going to be this is really a comeback fight for Kell Brook because you know usually when somebody gets stopped like that they have like a they have like a comeback fight you know you know something to kind of build their confidence back up so that way they can go into another big fight you know with a full head of steam but Kell Brook is kind of coming back from ground zero he didn't he didn't really have any confidence right he just got stopped and and it's it's like into another difficult fight you know what I mean so you know I, I gotta wonder how he is mentally going into a fight like this 
uh, all together, man. That, that's just going to make uh, that just makes it all the more um, interesting for me to see this fight. Um, I don't mean I mean, a lot of thoughts are going through my head when it comes to this fight, man. Um, a lot of different things are coming to my head. Um, shit. I mean, I mean, the weight. That's another thing. Kell Brook and the weight. I mean, you know, he he he, he looked really, really ripped up at 160 pounds so you know if he was ripped at 160 pounds then that tells me he put on a lot of muscle uh to be able to fill in fill in at that weight you know so if he put on all that muscle to be able to fill in at that weight it's going to be really tough for him to get back down to 147 pounds man that's going to be interesting too because if he kills himself to get back down to 147 pounds, that's also going to leave him at, a, at, at quite a bit of a, a disadvantage uh, going in there versus Errol Spence. So he's going to be uh, suffering from a lack of confidence. He's going to be suffering uh, from being drained down to 147 pounds. And I'm not trying to make no excuses. I'm just looking at this thing logically. Um, he's going to be drained down to go down to 147 pounds, and he's going to fight uh, probably, arguably, one of the best welterweights in the division. So, I mean, this is—I mean, this is going to be very interesting. I think this will prove a lot um, when it comes to Kell Brook and what he can do, um, and, and and all everything and all that that and above. You know what I mean? So, it'll be really, really interesting, and it'll be—it's it re- also going to be interesting to see Errol Spence. Um, you know, how he handles that level of competition, man. I mean, I, like I said, man, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm excited for this fight. I'm excited that the fight got made. Uh, 2017 has just been real this year for boxing, man. I mean, I, I couldn't be happier. I don't know what got under these promoters. I don't know what the hell they got on or what, what narcotic they've been smoking on or what the hell been going on. But, you know, keep it up. Whatever y'all smoking, if y'all need more, Holla at your boy. I serve you. Nah, I'm just playing. But, you know, I mean, that's I'm, I'm just happy that all of this is going on, man. I couldn't be more excited about these, this fight. Um, I'm ready to see that unified, uh, undisputed champion of the world of the welterweight division. And we're getting closer and closer, man. I mean, now if we can get Manny Pacquiao, big head ass, in there with somebody who's worth a goddamn, um, then, you know, I mean, damn it. I mean that would be beautiful, you know what I mean? But I, I don't, I don't see that happening. Uh, some Pacquiao is probably gonna have to retire and give up the belt, and the next person is probably gonna have to go in there and try to get in there with one of the top welterweights. I don't, I just don't see Pacquiao fighting anybody, um, you know, uh, to try to to try to unify any divisions or anything. I don't, I don't see Pacquiao doing anything outside of trying to get a paycheck. You know what I mean? But but back to Kell Brook versus Errol Spence, man. Um, I, I, how many times I got to say that I'm excited about this fight, man? I don't know, man. Let me know your thoughts um, if in the comment section below. Uh, you can also hit me up on Twitter, Box Capital X or Capital X Die. You can also hit me up on Facebook, Box Minus Sign or Minus Sign Die. Uh, but until next time, it's your boy D-Dynamite signing out. Holla at your motherfucking boy.